Hi ladies, hi everybody, it's Andrea um, coming on for another video today and I want to talk about um, eating healthy um, and how you view eating healthily yourself. Um, so I just want to introduce myself first. I'm Andrea and I'm a nutritional therapist and, and I love to help and support women to get healthy hormones so they can look good and feel good inside and out. So yeah, today I want to talk to you about eating healthy. Um, it should be easy, right? You know, you think about healthy foods and, and it should be a lot easier. And um, But a lot of us don't think that it's easy. And we all know that we should eat healthy, but we don't. Um, and often that can lead to a lot of uh, problems viewing food and um, your relationship with food and being around food can be a problem um, just because of this pressure that we feel about eating healthily all the time and yes you can eat for good health what you eat is important for good health but you don't have to you don't have to put be put pressure on yourself to always eat healthily all the time um, because that can lead to lots of problems around food and having an unhealthy relationship with food and um, if you're viewing food as a restriction um, say if you, you feel like you can't go out to events or special occasions or you don't trust yourself around food it can really generate lots of unhealthy feelings and um, it can make you feel quite unpleasant and feel sad and it can even, could even lead to a bit of depression, you know, a bit of anxiety around food, you know, how you view think about how you view food and what you think should be healthy. Because a lot of people think they're eating healthy. Um, so what your version of eating healthy looks like and somebody else's version of eating healthy, it can be completely different. Because um, I thought I was eating healthy myself quite uh, I'm saying about 20 years ago now maybe 15 20 years ago I really thought I was eating healthy because I've been interested in health and nutrition all my life because I had lot I had uh, lots of depression when I was younger I had really extremely bad periods when I was younger my skin was so dry um, I was a sugar junkie myself I just couldn't get enough of like cakes biscuits um, I just was eating it all the time um, just to and the more I ate the more I wanted and I, I thought that because I had a, a very extremely active job then that was okay I could eat as many biscuits and cakes as I wanted because it wouldn't get fat but it wasn't all about that it's not all about you know being able to eat lots of biscuits and chocolate because you won't get fat it's about what's that doing to your body inside what's that sugar doing and it was destroying my health pretty in a, in a bad way and i didn't know about that at the time um and I've been, the more the more i read about it the more i researched it going through my perimenopause journey and how i was affecting my health and how bad my health was getting i've just over the years i i've slowly began to change my diet and i had to drastically change my diet um, ten over ten years ago now, because I couldn't digest anything, because my digestion got so bad, my health got got pretty bad. In uh, start of my perimenopause journey, things started to, to get worse. I also had a massive car accident, and I was in hospital for three weeks. And I think that was just the start of the big problems as well for me when I had to start making big changes. And I started finding ways on how I could incorporate the way I was eating to change my habits, to change the way the way I viewed food. And um, because I had to, because I wanted to get well and because I couldn't digest anything else. So I had to drastically change that what I was doing. Um, I don't believe, believe in deprivation. You don't have to deprive yourself of the foods that you like to eat you know i like to follow like a rule of 80 percent of the time or 90 percent of the time you're eating for good health you're eating for for because when you're healthy when you feel good when you've got your health under control you can relax a bit more around the food you can eat the more unhealthy foods if you want without affecting your health at all 
you know, your body can cope with a few treats here and there you know being able to go to a, a, um, a function or to a restaurant and eat what you want without having to think oh I shouldn't, I shouldn't be eating this I shouldn't be eating that you know I don't believe in creating um, deprivation at all around foods and you should be able to eat still eat what you want um, at the end of the day um, and the focus can be it can be hard because a lot, a lot of the things can be outside influences as well a lot of outside influences that could be um, like supermarkets for instance supermarkets are getting they, they get the, the quite good at trying to get you to buy things that you shouldn't be buy, buying buying the unhealthy foods they put things in the entrance you know like all the cakes and and muffins and and then they they start baking in the in the supermarket so when you're going in you can smell you can smell the food being baked you can smell the bread being baked you can smell the muffins and can smell chocolate and sometimes this isn't real you know they can put these smells into the air it's an artificial it's like a machine putting the smell of that chocolate into the air it might not be they might not be baking it really it's quite clever how they do that so never go to the supermarket hungry because that will make you want to buy more of the unhealthy things. You know, always go to the supermarket and always go to the supermarket with a list, a list of things that you want to buy and don't ever deviate off that list. And what I do, I try and avoid, avoid the aisles, avoid going down those aisles that contain the unhealthy foods. I just bypass all them altogether, I'm not interested. You know, I just want to buy what's on my list. I want to buy the foods that make me feel good, that's going to nourish my body. I know, I, because I know that once I've eaten something I shouldn't have eaten, I don't feel good. I feel sluggish, tired. And, and I know now, from experience, not to go down that road. Um, so the focus should be around thinking about food to nourish your body not just eating food to satisfy your hunger um, if you can try if you can change your mindset like that change that around thinking okay why do I want to eat this food right now do I want to eat this food is it going to nourish me is it going to make me feel good or is this food not going to make me feel good because nine times out of ten you've you've eaten that food out of desperation you've eaten it because of your you've got uh, something emotional that's happening in your life you're not happy with yourself you've got something lacking in your life that's not bringing you joy something not right and after you've eaten that food you might have eaten like six a full packet of biscuits or something like that and then afterwards you're going to feel guilty about it it's gonna you're gonna be hard on yourself about it and just beat yourself up because you've eaten it um, I mean I don't do that you know just look at it and say right okay I have just eaten that packet of biscuits and don't be hard on yourself don't be uh, negative to yourself about it you just need to change that next time so next time you that comes up for you you want to think okay do I really want to eat that packet of biscuits right now what did I do last time how did I feel last time after I did that? If you keep a journal and try to figure out why you're eating that food, why you, why are you eating for it? You're eating it to fill a void in your life. You're eating it because you're not happy. You're eating it because you're emotional. Can you get a distraction from that? Can you change that in your life? You no, know, do lots of journaling. That can really, really help with your um, the way you're viewing food. Because you, you can change the way that you, you, you taste food. Because when I was younger, um, I used to drink tea with lots of milk and sugar, two sugars. And I thought that I couldn't, I couldn't stop that. So I challenged myself. I say, I'm going to get milk out of my diet. I'm going to get sugar out of my diet. So I, first of all, I took, um, I took the sugar out first and got used to drinking tea without the sugar in it. And then after that, I took the milk out. And now I would not be able to drink a cup of tea with milk and sugar in it. 
I think somebody gave me a cup of tea once and I forgot that I didn't take milk. And I just, I took one sip and I said, look, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I can't drink this tea because it's got milk in it. I can't drink it because my taste just didn't like it anymore. You can change the way that you taste food. Because I didn't used to like lots of different types of foods. I didn't used to like lots of healthy food myself. You know, I can teach you how to do that. I can teach you how you can eat more healthy and I can change the way you view food. Um, how, to, how to focus on eating for good health and changing the way you, um, you know, just changing your taste buds um, and getting you to, to put it in your mouth and, and enjoy eating it. And you, you'll start to crave those foods more. You'll start to crave eating um, more of those healthy foods. Trust me, I've, it happened to me. I, I'm, I'm talking through experience here. Everything I'm teaching you in my videos, teaching us through my own experiences that's happened to me and I can now help and support you to do the same. I mean, what would it mean to you to be able to get through your day with no negative thoughts, no um, feeling lethargic, um, no brain fog, you know, just get through your day, not having a lot of energy, not feeling good, not feeling happy, to be able to get through your day to look good and feel good inside and out to wake up with energy, to be able to sleep, to have good skin. I mean, look at my skin now. It was so dry before. Today, I haven't put moisturizer on and my skin feels, still feels like silky smooth. It's amazing, you know, just by changing throughout the way I, the way I eat. And I can help and support you do the same. So I've got my hormone reset starting on the 1st of July. And I wanna, want you to be there if you have any struggles right now. You know, just think about how your life would be. Visualize that, all your symptoms that you've got right now. What would it be to reverse those, to, to actually get up out of, out of bed every day and feel good and have energy? Because um, there's lots of women now that are feeling up, they're having anxious thoughts, waking up feeling fatigued every day. Um, I talked about it at work the other day, I was talking to some ladies and they go, yeah, that's me. I wake up every day, I don't have a lot of energy at all. And, and it shouldn't be like that. You know, you're not living life to the full. You want to live life to the full. And you want to wake up and, and it's not it's not good to, to wake up and not feel good. Um, so if you want to come along, join my reset. Um, I'm going to be doing it every month this year. So if you can't join in July, I'll be running it again. I'll be opening it up again in August, to run it again in August. And, and I'll be joining you in a private Facebook group to give you help and support over four weeks. It's going to be a full month long um, hormone reset because it can take three months for your hormones to reset. But I can set you off, set the ball rolling on these four weeks. And first of all, I'm going to talk to you all individually. I will be doing a call with you all individually before you start the hormone reset. So I know where you are on your journey, on your health journey, where, how, how you're feeling, what you're suffering with right now. And then I can point you in the right direction, how to go through the hormone reset successfully, how to change your diet, how to work with your mindset, how to work with your exercise, how to change the way you view foods. Um, you can, I can give you some, some um, tips and what I think that you should do because every woman's different. Every woman will be at a different place in their health journey and how they are feeling right now. So I can coach you at the beginning to, to tell you where you can, what you can do when I provide you with all the meal plans, provide you with a, um, some mindset tips, some how to journal right, um, I'll give you a food intolerance guide, um, a self-care guide uh, as well. And then you get a full workbook to read about your symptoms and about herbs and teas and how they will help you to get well again. Because I love herbs. Herbs are made with plants, they're made with barks, and they work with your body a lot better than supplements do. A lot of supplements that you can buy are not worth buying because they're synthetic. And, and they might as well just flush them down the toilet because that's all they'll do. We, you put them in your body in that end and they'll just come out the other end and they probably won't have even been digested. Um, so I like to work with herbs to nourish, as, a, as a supplement to nourish your body, to give you extra, extra, um, extra nourishment. I like to work with food. 
So if you want to come along to the reset, um, I'd love you to join us. I'll put the link in the, in the, um, the comment section below. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, as, as, as before, please put a question in, in, the, um, in the comments and, and I'll answer it for you. Uh, so thanks for watching today and take care of yourself and I'll see you again in another video. See you later.